Hey, we're coming to you today from a small town in southern Ontario called Port Dalhousie. It's actually my hometown and the uh, guy behind the camera is a really good friend of mine, Paul Wing, and he's from Port as well. So today we're at a place called Lock Street Craft Brewery. It's not open yet. Uh, they're planning on opening in October, I believe. And the reason it's kind of interesting is not because it's a craft brewery, but it's where Paul and I probably first started drinking in um, taverns back when we were pretty young and probably younger than we should have been in terms of uh, drinking in these kinds of places. But uh, we're going to be interviewing Wolfgang Gimbel, who is uh, part owner of this particular establishment, and listen to his story in terms of how they started, where they, uh, they're they planning on going, and uh, maybe they have a little bit of a tasting of beer as well. So let's go in and see what's going on. We're here with uh, Wolfgang Gimbel at uh, Lock Street Craft Brewery, and uh, we've already started some of the story basically, but let's just back up again. Um, you own the triathlon store next door and partners with a number of other businesses in the block. Um, why the craft brewery? How did that start? So it begins with my par so my partner Daryl Austin and I. We acquired uh, these two buildings that we refer to as the Wellington Air Force. So it's the old bank building and then what was the old Lions Tavern, the old Wellington Hotel. Yep. And uh, he and his wife Sherry own a stand-up paddleboard and surf shop, and he makes handmade uh, paddleboards. He makes them himself here in North America. And my wife and I have a a store that sells Canadian made swim apparel and a Canadian bicycle brand and so those were you know virtues important to us. When we bought the buildings we wanted to find a way to house our, our active lifestyle stores and then two to three other artisan vendors that related to food or, or a nice balanced lifestyle. So in our minds we had uh, a high-end coffee shop, some kind of bakery or bistro and then either a craft beer bar or a, or a wine bar. Uh, an Ontario wine bar. Mm -hmm. And once we had Balzac's Coffee signed on the bank building, that was a big plus for us because we, we loved their brand. Uh, and then we got our own stores in and then we found uh, the perfect partner for for us. Uh, we didn't find a great tenant or potential tenant. And I was teaching business and marketing at Niagara College and had a big beer program at Niagara College. And someone point me in the direction of some equipment that was for sale at a brewery. And instead of waiting for the right tenant, I went to my partner with the building, I went to Daryl and said, you know, we should really just do this ourselves. So we, you know, squeezed together some capital, we went up to Ottawa and we bought a brewery. We bought everything. It was like the Grinch who stole Christmas. We made one bid, everything, like I even took his last bag of rose on for Christmas, took everything. Light fixtures, copper pipe, <coughs> took everything. But had no idea what any of it yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was brewing one recipe using open fermentation. I was telling you that you know that didn't mean anything to me. We had these huge walk-in fridges uh, to accommodate that. So when we we bought all the equipment, we drove it to Toronto in these massive trucks. We did everything ourselves. Uh, brought it in here. We brought it through that front window in the building, and everything was still under construction. Like this room looks to me, it looks amazing. To a lot of people, it looks unfinished, but. There was just broken stud walls and exposed floors and, and everything, third floor, like right from the 1800s, it was just derelict and it broke something. And then there was, you know, almost a quarter million dollar shiny beer equipment. And we were just shuttling it from one side to the other, right? So we built around it. And um, so we kind of stumbled into it. And then spending a year to finish the space and, and become a brewery, we learned quickly about fermenters and glycol chillers and filters and work fillers and all these other things that we need to have to be a full scale brewery. So it's taken us that extra year to acquire all the other pieces that we, that we need. But we we just kind of stumbled into it. Thought, well, it's it's a ourselves. different story than, than the Barley Boys that we've sort of heard. I think I mentioned that usually folks are brewers to begin with and then they decide that they want to expand and then open up a business basically. Um, so this is completely different. Yeah, I mean, you totally buy some equipment, totally like a whole bunch of equipment, and what are we going to do with it? Yeah, and, and you know, Daryl's a very successful entrepreneur. He's, been, he's, he's a little older than I am, and he's, he's 
built and sold many successful buildings and, and businesses as well. And um, so for him, he was in, he's interested in any business model that makes sense. And as I was teaching at the college, uh, I often had to come up with with templates and uh, case studies for for to discuss in class. So the brewing business model is the obvious one to choose because there's so much happening at the school. And uh, so when I approached Daryl about it, I said, you know, I've been teaching this business model class, and it's awesome. <laughs> and in Ontario, it's it's awesome. So there's no reason why we shouldn't do this ourselves. And, and we had sat through a number of pitches from people willing, interested in putting their own career in there, yep. and I was kind of listening to what their plans were, and I thought, I, I just need to do this by myself, because I'm going to do a better job of it, and it's going to, be, it's going to speak more to our, our brand and to our project. And rather than waiting for someone to do the right thing, we thought we'd just do it ourselves. But we're so completely blind to what it means to buy a career. So when was this? I mean, if there is a starting point, when did you really kind of, when did you buy the equipment, which so obviously is when you started? We bought this building in December of 2014, and then on July 1st of 2015, we went up to Ottawa to get the equipment. So that's seven months later, we bought the equipment, and then and now we, weren't even in our, we weren't even in our stores yet, so okay. we, everything just kind of sat here and then we built out a price and then we built out those oh, okay. and then we, you know, we slowly did more work here. And there's tons of work on the back end. If you've ever opened a brewery, at least in Ontario, you have to get a variety of licenses and they have to go in chronological order and you can't do them all at the same time. And, and, um, and we had an interest in the commercial side of things, so we were also interested in the LCBO and in Ontario that's also a very lengthy application process. So while we were putzing around in here, we went down the road of applying to the LCBO for listing and, and getting all of our various licenses in place. And the licensing thing is at least a solid year process. And we figured we got, we got lots of time to get our ducks lined up. And your plan opening date is October of this year? Yes. And yep. will you be brewing in here at that point yes. then as well? Yeah, it should be, unless we find more ghosts. <laughs> but, uh, we didn't it's know no building, so... Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I mean, we wanted to be open for May long weekend, and then we pushed it to Father's Day, and then we pushed it to July 1st, and then we said, there's no more dates, so we're mm -hmm. just going to take our time. Yeah. Because every little... The closer and closer we got to being ready, there was one more little thing that just needed to be done right, rather than rushing it. And, and you have that pressure of being open in Port Jerusalem in the summertime when it's awesome and thousands of people outside and they're all banging on your window saying, can you buy something? And you just do the math every time someone says that. <laughs> and, uh, but you have to do it right, and there's lots of years and lots of summers left. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So we're having an opportunity to drink some of the beer here. This is, what do we drink? This is our wheat beer, and uh, it doesn't have a name yet. It would, it would have been called winter wheat. So we started developing a recipe that actually used winter wheat. And at least in North America, wheat beer is marketed as a summer beer. Right. And sadly, it's often brewed with a, with a citrus component to it. Because yep. the North American palate, for whatever reason, expects it to be in there. If you were in Bavaria or Belgium, you would get to drink wheat beer all year round. Uh, but in the summer, they would give you a fresh slice of citrus that you'd then add to the glass. But um, with the college, you know, their recommendation was to have a citrusy element to it. So our first batch we had in December was only 100 liters, and we did a few batches to, you know, play with our recipe. And uh, we wanted to start using winter wheat as a grain and, um, and, and market it as a winter beverage to contrast with all the Ontario marketing for summer wheat years. And uh, so this one, we did a larger batch, but we don't have winter wheat in it. We've yeah. got summer wheat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for intents and purposes, it's our winter wheat, okay. minus the, the winter wheat. The winter wheat. And, uh, and this one doesn't have the citrus element in it, if we back that out on this batch. So it's, I prefer this. We just try it's to very nice. We're the first two people to try it. It's I, nice, yeah. Good. I, uh, I love it. So. And you've got... Uh, something that you call IPA, but it's, it's, it's an in, we call it industrial. We call it an industrial pale ale. Yeah. So the, the LCBO in Ontario is conscious of the consumer's interest in the brand IPA. It's a 
of recognizable churn amongst craft beers. Your average less informed drinker will recognize that as a, as a genre of beer they might like to try. And the LCBO is cognizant of that because it drives, drives sales. And so we made a pitch to the LCBO that we'll, pro we'll provide an IPA to you. But our personal drinking interests tend towards pale ales rather than more bitter, yeah. more hot and high <coughs> India pale ales. So we thought we'll make an industrial pale ale. And it'll be an IPA and it looks sexy like an IPA. <laughs> but it drinks like, you know, more like an ale, yeah. a traditional ale or a pale ale. Which means, you know, I'll drink it and my wife will drink it and my partner will drink it. But, you know, those really hoppy, bitter IPAs, the brewing students love it and, and beer competitions love it. And if you're real, really into beer, I think you're supposed to love it. But it certainly is a West Coast thing, all the way from California up to BC. IPAs, especially really strong. Like IPAs. really strong? I don't know. It's yeah. not my thing. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm not a real beer drinker. I'm not sure. But, but the nice thing is, you can, you know, there's so many different variations, and as long as you like it, uh, who cares? And, and this goes back to my interest in the in the, in the business. Here, Niagara is known traditionally for, for wine. And here, if you want to be a winemaker, you're limited to the variety of grapes you can grow on your plot of land. Right. And whatever you have, there's only so many things you can do with those grapes. But here, you get such a massive spectrum that you get to make with the equipment that you have. Yeah. From porters to ales to wheats to just all the different genres of beer. And then there's even, you know, you can make ciders with the same equipment. Fruity beers and, and light beers and strong beers and coffee beers. You can do just so many things. So that makes your market now infinitely bigger exactly. than, than the wine market. You can cater to old men, young men, hipsters, old guys, young women, old women, people that like fruity stuff, strong, like everything in the middle. You can, you can, yep. you can find a uh, a product, and then you can play to the seasons. You can do spicy pumpkin beers for Thanksgiving, Halloween, Halloween, and that kind of Christmassy thing. beers. Yeah. And you can do spring beers. Like you can play the season, which is if you're a marketer, the dream to, to play the seasons. And you get to play the labels, and you get to. So the question then, uh, I guess, is um, since you guys got into this not with a beer background, um, who will be brewing your beer then? So we have a couple of consultants that we've hired to do our recipe development. And then I'm, we're working really hard with the college to use the resources at okay. the college. Uh, and so we need someone here all the time. And yeah. then otherwise we can interview in way we can find. Uh, like You're not planning on taking on that yourself? Myself? Or any, either oh, no of you? Way. No way. No time. I've got three businesses and two kids. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I like it. I'd like to know more. but. I need an expert to do it, and we're happy to find. You'll learn through osmosis, I'm sure, by for, being for, here. For sure, for sure. What What are the plans as far as the uh, styles of beer? Then, like, you've got two here. What do you yeah, think? Yeah. So could on be? paper, right now, that we've developed, we've developed a lager, a wheat, and our IPA. Okay. And then, what comes next? I'd like to leave that up to our team. Yeah, that's a good idea. What do you think next? And if our timing is correct for October, then maybe it'll be something. And we just want to start doing a couple of things well, and then you know, focus on that, and, and, and uh, get everything running smoothly. Because and, and, and there's a fine line. Sometimes you want to, I won't say force, but you want to play with some stuff and offer it to people. But on the other hand, you also want to be cognizant of what the tastes are of the people who are coming into your establishment and what they like. So um, you need to kind of walk that fine line sometimes. Yeah. And right now, I mean, our recipes are relatively mainstream. Yeah. What makes them craft is that they're made from, you know, we try to use organic ingredients when possible. We try to use local ingredients when possible. We make it all ourselves. It's 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 as artisan as, as you can get. So in lieu of it being just from a big box brewery, then, then uh, it's already a craft in, a, in and of itself. But we're not yet in a position to start to really explore. Yeah, yeah, understand the recipes or some new genre that we just made up. Or, um, we're more interested in making this good and accessible to our to our community. Um, our involvement with our community here is really important to us, and we're 
we started to work with the city whereby um, we'd like to contribute some number. It's likely going to be 10 cents, 5 or 10 cents a liter of our lighthouse logger is going to go into a fund that, that helps uh, restore anything that's heritage oriented here in Port Belize. So the big ticket items in Port Belize are the carousel and the we'll do a carousel hail and the lighthouses and the pier and yeah. the, the first locks right yeah. here. And it would be nice to have some kind of legacy funding scheme that, you know, it's not going to be millions, but maybe it's enough money for paint and upkeep and, and, and just to keep it in the foresight of people, yeah. people's minds. And, um, and it's a nice, it's a nice story. It's a nice way for us to, you know, embrace our. Yeah, our you community. become part so of the community then. We just want to roll that out and, and embrace our neighbors and, and, um, and then grow kind of with. So, lastly, I guess, what's the plan for this particular part of it? Is it just a tasting room? Is it a pub? Is it a... Yeah, well, the licensing, again, is complicated. Right now, we've got our manufacturer's license and our retail store operation, which means that we can uh, sell you a six-pack or a growler once we make it in those tanks. Yeah. So the liquid we have on site right now, I can only sell to a commercial licensee. Um, and I can offer you a sample when you come in. There's another license that I'm applying for now that will allow me to sell you a cup of beer for a month and you can sit here and drink. But it relies heavily on uh, a certain amount of construction to be finished. And it's just not, not, not there yet. Like the second floor has to be finished and the washings have to be completely finished in order to have the kitchen. Whereas for pure retail, you don't have to have a Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. But then we, we envision a large uh, harvest style table like a beer garden. Uh, we want to have some on the benches so there's no uh, you know, table for two, table for four, yeah, yeah. whenever we kind of sit amongst each other. And the model is still buy your beer and take it, take it to go. That's yeah. the main focus. But uh, the entire second floor is a special event space. Okay. And it's, uh, it's a large uh, L shaped space with the high mm -hmm. ceiling. And then you have that heritage balcony that we just started to rebuild. And it's, uh, I'll take you up later. Okay. You can go up there. It's a great view. Super. And that's where we see all of our programming and meetings that take place and our special events and weddings and Christmas parties. Sounds cool. So, yeah. Well, okay. I appreciate it's taking okay. the time because yeah. I know it's a busy day for yeah, you. It's it a busy, busy time yeah, and busy you've got 150 time. people coming from the Craft Beer Festival. So yes, we won't yeah. take any more of your time, but really appreciate it. And best of luck. Um, I wish I was back here in October so I could uh, come in and have another sample. Yeah, well, we'll be ready for uh, next year. You're going to come back for Henry next year? You never know. Never know. Never know. <laughs>